nice. By the end of the 90s, the Game Boy was considered a bit of an old timer with a lifespan of nearly a full decade. Sure, it had revolutionised the handheld video game market beginning in 1989, but the console had seemingly reached the full limit of what it could do. Not even the release of a smaller, more compact Game Boy in the form of the Game Boy Pocket could delay the inevitable. Then, after almost a decade in monochrome, Colour came to the Game Boy with the Game Boy Colour. Launching in October 1998, the Game Boy Color proved to be a ferocious shot in the eye for Nintendo's ancient portable. Combined with an obscure title called Pokemon, which was just beginning to dominate the cultural landscape in the West by this point, the Game Boy Color was a huge success. The system extended the run of the Game Boy by several years, with developers proving there was still some time left when you added something as simple as a little bit of color. With that in mind, let's celebrate this memorable chapter in the system's history with a look at the best Game Boy Color games of all time. Number 20, Mr. Driller. Not to be confused with the movie Driller Killer, which is um slightly different. With a lineage going back to the iconic Dig Dug series, Mr. Driller presents a simple premise with an ingenious execution and visually pleasing characters. Combining quick thinking with meticulous planning, this puzzle game saw a wide range of console releases in 1999 and 2000. The Game Boy Color Edition impressively stood out alongside entries for the original PlayStation and Sega Dreamcast, which we'll get to eventually. Without ever getting too frustrating or too easy, Mr. Driller is one of the most enjoyable, engaging puzzle games released to the Game Boy Color. Losing a few hours to this game's bright graphics and relentless challenges, pretty easy. How many hours did you lose to it? Be sure to let us know down below. Number 19, Crystalis. Crystalis was a solid indication that the Game Boy Color had the ability to look and play nearly as well as the NES. That's a pretty impressive achievement for the little system at the time, especially because JPEGs used to take 10 hours to download, although obviously this port of the Nintendo Classic Crystalis has some limitations. You're not likely to notice these limitations, however, as you'll probably be too busy enjoying one of the best RPGs of the 8-bit era. The top-down style of Crystalis looks great here on the Game Boy Color. The game isn't perfect in its action RPG execution, but it still presents a comprehensive and ultimately engrossing experience. Crystalis is an easy title in the genre to simply pick up and play, though it's still certainly hard as rock. Like a diamond or a crystal. We got there in the end, didn't we? We got there. Number 18, Survival Kids. Also known as Stranded Kids in the UK and sounding an awful lot like an old forgotten reality show on VH1 in the 2000s, Survival Kids might call to mind overhead action RPGs like The Legend of Zelda. As a young boy stranded on a mysterious island, it becomes your job to not only survive your surroundings, but manage the day-to-day -day challenges of simply keeping yourself alive and functional. It becomes imperative to drink water, eat food and get some rest. These actions quickly become a critical element of this title's compelling gameplay and can stand as a bit of a predecessor to what would come many years later. The use of a clever merge system also helps Survivor Kids to stand out as something unique. This is an IP that hasn't seen much attention in recent years, and that's really too bad. If Konami is looking to start up some of their franchises again, this one makes a lot more sense than you might think, especially in the wake of games like Grounded. Number 17, Rayman. Before he was upstaged by those wretched minion-like rabbits, Rayman as a character had a perfectly respectable run of platformers for the PlayStation, Sega Saturn, and even the Atari Jaguar. Will we ever do a list on that? Would you want to watch that? Let us know. The Game Boy Color Edition in Rayman sticks as closely as possible to the formula established with the first game's release in 1995. You'll hunt for power-ups, manage tricky platforming situations, and do everything in your power to stop the sinister Mr. Dark for good. I mean, at least he's upfront about it, you know, Mr. Dark? Just might as well call him Mr. Evil. Rayman specifically on the Game Boy Color can be immensely frustrating at times, but with impressive replay value and a general sense of fun that draws you in. Rayman's Game Boy Color outing is not a perfect port, but still very solid given the challenges. Speaking of challenges, who we got a challenge to Mortal Kombat to get a new Rayman game around here, guys? I mean, come on! Number 16, Legend of the River King. Originally released for the original Game Boy in 1997, the endlessly charming Legend of the River King received a stellar Game Boy Color update just a couple of years later. The last thing you want to do is assume this fishing game, developed by the same company responsible for the Harvest Moon franchise, is simply a fishing game. While that's obviously a big part of the proceedings, Legend of the River King aspires to offer a deeper experience. 
for the most part, Legend of the River King succeeds admirably in this regard. Dealing with monsters, supply challenges and other factors all create a marvellous game that regrettably comes to an end much too soon. Still though, for what it provides, it's a game that definitely fishes for compliments and deserves a high place on this list. That's place with an eye. Fish puns. If you ever enjoy the likes of Moonlighter or Pokemon, you'll enjoy this one too. Number 15, Bionic Commando Elite Forces. Bionic Commando Elite Forces doesn't forget the core concept of why Bionic Commando was a hit with both arcade and NES fans. Elite Forces keeps the element of presenting players with a substantial challenge by forcing them to use their bionic arm for all their platforming needs, but throws in two characters with slightly different play experiences, some great sniper sequences, and the usual high degree of difficulty the Bionic Commando franchise is known for and feared for. The learning curve behind Bionic Commando Elite Forces can be a bit much for younger players, but old school NES fans already know what they're in for. Pain. A truly excellent Bionic Commando release and one of the best Game Boy Color games, but it's a pity how quiet this franchise has become in the last 10 years or so. Dead wife arm or not, it's time for us to go Commando once again. Number 14, Kirby, Tilt and Tumble. King DDD, seemingly annoyed that his name is stupid, is once again trying to make life difficult for everyone around him, and only Kirby can save the day. There's nothing groundbreaking in the plot of Kirby Tilt and Tumble, but the little pink platforming hero, whose career began on the original Game Boy eight years prior, is in fantastic form on this Game Boy Color release all the same. Just like most Kirby games, it's easy to pick up and get the hang of Kirby Tilt and Tumble, which has players using tilting and moving the Game Boy Color to move Kirby in ball form along the various challenges and stages the game presents. Getting this game completely down to a T is another matter though. Kirby Tilt and Tumble can be unforgiving in the best way possible, and it might be like the closest that Kirby has to like a souls like kind of difficulty. I, I'm just picturing like Kirby drinking from an Estus flask and like inhaling loads of big dragons. Make it happen from soft. Number 13, R Type DX. R Type DX refers to Deluxe and not D Generation X. That would have been an interesting hybrid of things that were very popular in 1999, which is the year this game was released. And listen, pal, if you ain't down with that, I've got two words for you. This updated and distinctly improved remake of two original Game Boy games was a case of serious ambition for the relatively much smaller Game Boy Color. What we got was nothing short of fantastic, with a brilliant shooter getting lavish and entertaining treatment on the portable colour console. There's a shocking amount of depth to be enjoyed with R-Type DX. The game is easily accessible for those who don't play these sorts of games very often, but their challenge and higher difficulty settings will whip even the most dedicated players like government mules, bad gold. Number 12, Harvest Moon 2 GBC. Harvest Moon was the definitive adorable farming slash life simulator until Animal Crossing came along. The series hit some of its best notes in this particular period, with Harvest Moon 2 being arguably the best of the three releases the Game Boy Color ever received. The series hits a level of refinement here that makes plunking a few hours into Harvest Moon 2 and making cow pals seem like the easiest thing in the world. While admittedly a little more dated than most, Harvest Moon 2 is still a stellar example of the Game Boy Color being able to offer a life simulation experience surprisingly faithful as often as possible to the SNES original. It's not without frustration, but Harvest Moon 2 is still cute and compulsory, though those more used to Stardew Valley may want something a bit beefier, or I mean milkier, I mean burger -er. wait what? Number 11, Dragon Ball Z Legendary Super Warriors. We've seen you in the comments on pretty much every single game list we've done so far. Where is Dragon Ball Z Game X? Where is Dragon Ball Z? Here you go, here's one. A turn-based card game on the Game Boy Color doesn't sound very exciting, even if it has a title as immediately attention-grabbing as Dragon Ball Z Legendary Super Warriors. While it might be difficult to imagine a Dragon Ball Z game that's not a fighting game, though those are more common than you might think, Legendary Super Warriors surprises you again and again with its fascinating hybrid genres. Not only is the game as visually pleasing as any card game could hope to get, it's also an absolute blast to play. Even if you're not someone who considers themselves a fan of turn-based games, card games, or even both of those things, Dragon Ball Z Legendary Super Warriors is worth your time. It manages to use its unique mechanics in a way that still feels like Dragon Ball Z, and one of the most underrated video game adaptations of the Legendary franchise too. Are you happy now? 
We'll put Tenkai each in another one. We'll put all of them in another one. Right, God. Number 10, Donkey Kong Country. As impressive as the Game Boy Color was by the year 2000, when Donkey Kong Country for the handheld was released, no one expected the system to flawlessly replicate the 1994 SNES hit. Having said that, there's a lot to be impressed with here. The game is pretty visually strong given the honest limitations of the Game Boy Color, and at least gets close to looking much like it did on the Super Nintendo six years prior. Donkey Kong Country for the Game Boy Color is also just a lot of fun to play. The controls are simplified but responsive, and the game's wildly swinging pendulum of stroke-inducing difficulty remains more intact than you might think. There's even some genuinely enjoyable bonus content here, but also there are still those dastardly minecart levels that are anything but enjoyable. Maybe the hardest section in any Nintendo published game ever? What do you think? Let us know down below. Number 9, Lufia The Legend Returns Natsume unquestionably had a fantastic run on the Game Boy Color, bringing 8-bit quality JRPGs and other titles like Lufia The Legend Returns to the system. With a unique battle system and an unexpectedly complex narrative, this will be the third release in the series. It's largely forgotten today by everyone except the most dedicated JRPG enthusiasts, and that's a shame. Lufia The Legend Returns is pretty much everything you could ever want from a JRPG on the go. Lufia The Legend Returns will throw some extremely challenging dungeons your way. The 3x3 battle formation pattern you work with, featuring 9 characters in play at any given time, only heightens this satisfying difficulty. It might not look like much these days, but we would love for this legend to return. We'll just go and download it on the 3DS eSh... Uh, uh. Number 8, Dragon Warrior 3. Dragon Warrior 3 features relatively stunning graphics and sound, a new dungeon, a new character class, and a bunch of new monsters. To a certain point, this JRPG classic, originally released for the NES a full decade earlier, feels and even plays like a completely different game. Even though it's technically a port of a Super Famicom release, Dragon Warrior 3 for the Game Boy Color actually manages to add a few more bells and whistles that really help to modernize it. Anyone who considers themselves to be a big fan of JRPG should really make it a point to play this version in some form or fashion. If you can get your hands on the Game Boy Color version, you'll be playing an absolute classic that stands up well against its peers that are more household names. Plus, who needs Pokemon when you have a Game Boy Game Link cable and monster medals? Everybody on the playground loves monster medals. Yeah. Number 7, Shantae. The Game Boy Color was near the end of the line by 2002 when Shantae was released, as the Game Boy Advance had become the primary focus of Nintendo's handheld console attention. But yet, the system was still putting out some great games two years into the new millennium. Shantae deserves love just for how beautiful this game still looks after 20 plus years. The sprites for Shantae are still unique and engaging to say the least, as they honestly don't really look like they've aged today. Truthfully, this looks like it could be released on something like Steam as a retro throwback today. The backgrounds and colour are vibrant and magnificent at creating an exciting and memorable world. A platformer with some unique touches, Shantae is still going strong to this day, with the game released as recently as 2019, and ports happening fairly regularly. Number 6, Wario Land Free. Now, we're not going to go so far as to call Wario Land 3 a Metroidvania game. Still though, the game does have elements of Metroid backed into its ludicrous character designs and wacky, sarcastic story. Wario can be the most entertaining character in the room, and the depth and varied cleverness of Wario Land 3 shows us how and why. Something particularly great about Wario Land 3 is its inclusion of special abilities, which will have you returning to previously finished levels to look for new paths and treasures. You're going to have a pretty comprehensive understanding of this game's maps and its challenging level designs before it's all said and done, and you're going to want to dive right back in all over again. We're overdue for a new Wario Land game at this point, right? Nintendo get this man out of the WarioWare content mines. Number 5, Mario Golf. Mario Golf was a surprisingly popular game for the N64. The Game Boy Color port is no different, but manages to utilize the limitations and possibilities of the Game Boy Color to create something that's quite special. Personality abounds in Mario Golf, from the RPG elements to the excellent graphics and sound, and even considering the cute, funny story. Mario Golf succeeds as both a game you can pick up and play in just a few minutes, and as a deeper game that will keep you busy for longer than you might think. 
To combine both of those gameplay approaches in a single title is pretty impressive. Mario Golf even manages to be pretty faithful to the game of golf itself for purists, whereas later entries went a little buck wild with the concept. I think Super Rush had something to do with helping Mario evade his taxes once again? Something like that? I can't remember. Number 4. Metal Gear Solid The fact that Metal Gear Solid, one of the many, many, many Metal Gear games we've been treated to over the years but not recently, doesn't make the top 3 doesn't mean that it's only some handheld spin-off. It's just that the Game Boy Color's library really was that strong. This was a period in which Nintendo and Konami was really showing off what they could do with a handheld system that had a little more power behind it. In no way is this alternate version of the PlayStation Juggernaut, also known as Metal Gear Ghost Babble, a copy of that game exactly, as it's more like a continuation of the original Metal Gear games. However, there's still a lot that can be done with gameplay, atmosphere and even character design, especially on such a small screen. On all those fronts, and for being bold enough to imagine a different continuity in the already pretty wild Metal Gear timeline, Metal Gear Solid is a winner on the Game Boy Color, especially for fans of the original Metal Gear games in all their top-down glory. Number 3. Super Mario Bros. Deluxe Super Mario Bros. Deluxe promises the legendary NES original with some essential and decidedly pleasing bonus features thrown in for good measure. What players got was a game that offered enough updates to the classic to make it worth the time of new and experienced fans alike. The Mario vs. Boo mode alone is a ton of fun, but there's also Super Mario Bros. for Super Players, a feature that is basically a remake of the Lost Levels. You're getting a pretty definitive piece of Mario history in one considerable package with Super Mario Bros. Deluxe on the Game Boy Color. Besides offering so much playability, Super Mario Bros. Deluxe also features the ability to save your game, which is a lifesaver on Super Players mode. If you want the definitive version of the classic Mario experience, this may just be it. If you don't want to bust out the old Game Boy, of course, you can always download it on the Nintendo eShop via the 3D... Yeah. Yeah. Number 2. Pokemon Gold, Silver and Crystal We might be talking about free games here, and while you can certainly play any of these Pokemon games on their own, you won't be getting the whole experience. Pokemon Gold or Silver feature some of the best creature designs in the franchise, as well as some interesting improvements, such as breeding and real-time clocks, that only add to the experience of traveling the world and catching them Pokemon. For some fans, this generation represents the very pinnacle of what these games have to offer. Whether or not your love of these games goes that far, you can't deny that Pokemon Gold, Silver and Crystal are pretty easy to get into. Even if you don't think of yourself as a fan, you can't help but get absorbed as you travel across Johto. Definitely on top of Lugia though, who is, objectively, the best legendary. Let's just not think about the weirdness of children being asked to become part-time breeders. Eh? You gotta give kids interests at a young age, but maybe not that? Maybe? Slides are still cool. Do go sliding instead of breeding. And number one, The Legend of Zelda, Oracles of Ages and Seasons. Quirky was the word of the decade for Zelda fans. In addition to a very good remake of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening for the original Game Boy, the Game Boy Color also got two games that create a single, almost breathtaking experience once paired together. Amazingly, The Legend of Zelda Oracles of Ages and The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons provided even more entertainment for fans at a time when Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask had cemented the Zelda series as one of the biggest game franchises in the world. Oracle of Ages and Seasons wasn't just the same game with some minor differences, as they're both completely different campaigns with unique dungeons. A unique password system even enabled you to experience both games as a complete playing and narrative experience. It was a bold move that paid off for Nintendo and The Legend of Zelda, and one that deserves more recognition. If you still have copies of these games, you're sitting on a pretty good holiday fund right now. And that was our list for the best Game Boy Color games of all time! What did we miss? What was too high? What was too low? Let us know down in the comments down below. We'll see you next week for the best Game Boy Advance games, and thank you for watching.